Never complain, never explain. Never, no matter who comes at you, if you believe you haven't done anything wrong, if you believe in what you're saying, never apologize to the mob on this side or the mob on that side. What am I talking about? And don't take people's shit. Aaron Rodgers wasn't taking Hub Arkish nonsense where he called Aaron Rodgers a bad guy because he didn't get vaccinated. Fine. I get it. 90% liberal. That's the thought. He said it. So he has to take the mob from the other side. Fine. So Arkish, who is a known idiot, decides that he's going to call somebody he's never met. I've never met Arkish. That's why I put in the word known. Everybody that I know said, nah, he's just an idiot. I don't know. Maybe he's a great guy. I used to read his uh, football digest. It was one of those shorter magazines. So he's fine by me. But in this, many people of my friends in Chicago, yeah, known idiot. Maybe he's a good dude. Don't know. But anyway, I love that Aaron Rodgers called him a bum. I love that Aaron Rodgers is standing up to everybody. I was never an Aaron Rodgers fan, but I'm becoming an Aaron Rodgers fan. He makes sense to me. He says things that everybody should say. Somebody comes at you like a guy named Hub Arkish and calls you a bad guy, you should go right back at him. You should. You don't apologize to the guy. You don't meekly go away. Uh, You say, look, the guy's a bum. He's never met me, doesn't know me, never had lunch with me, never done a single thing around me that I know of. I'm sure he was sitting in a, um, I don't know, sitting in a press room, And on the radio show, I'm sure he thought he was a big guy. I'm sure he thought he was a big guy for saying, oh, you know, Roger's a bad guy. He didn't get vaccinated. I'm sure he thought that all of the professors and all of the media and all of the actors would certainly come to his defense because that's what we do in media. Which way does the wind blow? That's what media does. And then they go in that direction. That's all Arkish was doing. Well, the wind was blowing the other way, and people attacked him. Do you know who has become? Do you know the writer who has become America's conscience? I mean this. man named Bobby Burak. Lee, you know Bobby Burak. How good is he? Awesome. Bobby Burak has become America's conscience. Bobby Burak will call things out without worrying about, well, Who's going to get mad at me? So today, Bobby Burak printed, um, in a variety of different ways, the quote, what was the right word, kind of apology that Arkish made. Now, Arkish is a typical guy. When you ask typical guys, particularly typical Chicago guys like me, to apologize, we're always going to get a shot in, right? We're always going to get a little, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. You're always going to have a little bit of that. So Arkish kind of apologizes. Arkish kind of says, well, you know, uh, I shouldn't have done that. I apologize. Blah, 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 blah. That's nice. But Arkish, you made a mistake. There is never a reason for you to apologize. None. Zero. I think Bobby's uh, comment is right. I'm really not seeing the apology anywhere, but I think it is. Arkish, to me, is, yeah, oh, he definitely apologized. I made a terrible mistake Tuesday with my Aaron Rodgers comments. It was completely my fault. There's no one else to blame. I'm here to try and apologize. And he unlocked it. Here's the deal with Arkish. Don't apologize. There's no reason to apologize. There's never a reason to apologize. Why would you apologize? You meant what you said. You tried to bully. And you got shit on. And if you're Hub Arkish, you've been in this business for 50 years and not one person has ever paid attention to you. This is your time, baby. This is your go time. This is where people are going to know who Hub Arkish is. So Hub Arkish, I own this. No, you don't. So what? Does that make it all right? I mean, I, I don't know. Listen to this. There is no more respected bastion of journalism in the world than the Associated Press. Shut up. Shut up. Just stop. Stop. 
I allowed myself to be walked in. No, you didn't. People just lie. I wanted to say this about Aaron Rodgers, and I said it, and if Rodgers don't like it and others don't like it, screw you. That's it. Listen to this. Worse yet, I apparently unleashed a small army of self-styled social media and talk radio experts who have no clue what they're talking about to challenge the quality of the voting process. The voting process sucks. Bunch of old farts that don't know their ass from third base. Now, the old farts take it serious, but shut up with that. Hub Arkish, I got two words for you, and they're very simple words. My ass. Somebody finally knows who you are. I'm talking about you on the world's greatest morning show. Own it, baby. Own it. People are nuts with this apology stuff. Bobby Burak, don't ever stop being you. You are America's conscience. Super Bowl has contingency plans. Super Bowl's contingency plans are possibly to move it out of California, which they should, to Dallas, Texas. I wish they'd come to Indy. We're ready. We're ready for the national championship game. Backload it with the damn Super Bowl. And then let's get the NCAA tournament here. And our toes are tapping, baby. Now, the NFL is saying we do this all the time. I'm sure you do. But you should do it immediately right now. California is on lockdown. California is not going to allow you to have what you need for a Super Bowl, which is packed streets, packed merchandise buyers, packed bars, uh, packed restaurants, people buying everything that says Super Bowl on it once they get off the airplane in the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. I mean, you if you are smart, and you are, say whatever you want about the NFL – But the NFL understands one thing better than any other league, how to make themselves relevant and how to print money. And the NFL is going to figure this out. The NFL will figure out that, hey, look, Texas, wide open, big stadium, big streets, big environment. It's bigger in Texas. California, we're scared. We're locked down. Why? Because we're liberal. And we want to live scared. Good, live scared. Gone. I'd do it today. You know, Clay Travis has been saying that forever. And he ain't been wrong yet about it. Absolutely move that thing. I know you're trying to cover your ass. I know you're trying to say this is what we do every year. And maybe you do. I don't know. But do it. You should. There's no question you should. You're going to have it out there. Great spot. Beautiful weather. I get it. But the truth of the matter is, so is Dallas. And you can make all your money back that you want to make or maybe even more that you lost from the previous COVID year. Do it now. Do it right. Get the hell out of California and let's go. All right. This is interesting. Now, follow my logic here. Urban Meyer is being crushed by players that quit Ohio State. Okay? If you look into all these guys, Williamson quit, this other guy quit, and we take people that were disgruntled, they, we take their word as gospel. And it's complete bullshit, okay? Whether it's true or not, I don't know. I don't care. But we take the people's word that are disgruntled. Follow my logic. The NFL has initiated something very dangerous. Teams could lose draft picks by asking unprofessional questions in media, or excuse me, in team interviews with draft choices. Here's what I'm doing as a team. I'm videotaping everything. I'm videotaping every damn thing, every damn time that I talk to a prospect. Players lie. Oh, hey, look. Maybe somebody was told they're going to go fifth in the draft. They don't. They drop. What do they do after? Well, you know, I'm glad I didn't go to so-and-so team because they asked me about my mother. People lie. Players lie. Revenge is real. And we listen to it. It's a dangerous precedent. Of course you shouldn't ask anybody uh, whether, what do they ask, whether their mother was a hooker or whether somebody's family member sold drugs. Stupid. Stupid, but you got a lot of stupid people in the NFL. I see it every year at the Combine when all the clowns come in. It's awesome. The level of stupidity among NFL personnel is off the charts. It's great. Whenever I read dumbass questions being asked in an interview, I'm never surprised. Never. 
based on what I see at the combine, the people I run into. However, be very careful if you're the NFL. What determines an unprofessional question? You ever shit your pants? Maybe I want to know. Does a guy choke in the fourth quarter? I don't know. You ever poop your pants during a game? Well, you know, we were playing Clemson. It was late, and I kind of had a little squirt. Unprof- I, I am never putting this, the NFL, I'm never putting this in the hands of people that aren't in the NFL. And prospects aren't in the NFL until they suit up for an NFL game. I'm not doing it. But good for them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always the same people. It's always. Zion Williamson is becoming one of those people. Zion Williamson is becoming one of those people where every time you open up the newspaper, there's something new with Zion Williamson. He's too fat. He's rehabbing. He had a setback. He blah, 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 blah. Zion Williamson is going away from his team. He's going to rehab in Portland. Why Portland? I have no idea. Who cares? You know, if you're under contract for millions of dollars and you're going to be on a team in a city, how about you just stay with the city? But Zion Williamson has become one of those guys, and I'm going to be fascinated to see how the rest of Zion Williamson's career takes off or doesn't take off. Because those guys, those guys that are always in the paper, Those guys that are always doing something, well, you know, I'm too fat, so rehab hasn't gone well. Well, you know, I'm really in great shape, but rehab hasn't gone well. All right. Well, you know what? Um, The fact of the matter is don't become one of those guys. It never works out for those guys. See Antonio Brown. See Kyrie Irving. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Um... crazy. New York City. You're my favorite city. I love going to New York City. You're not my favorite, but you're one of them. Basically, in New York City, if you rob, if you assault, you ain't going to jail. This is how stupid we've become in this country. We've become so stupid and so worried. We're only seeking incarceration for the worst crimes. You know what? I've been robbed. My house has been robbed. It stays with you. My house has been firebombed. Yes, a Molotov cocktail fired at my house, set ablaze, has happened. You ever see those guys running down the streets in like northern Iowa or Beirut throwing those things that explode? That's a Molotov cocktail. Guy fired it at my house, set our garage on fire. I was a kid. That stays with you. I love that the Manhattan DA, and I hate that the Manhattan DA is saying, we're only going to put people in jail for the worst crimes. You know what that tells me if I'm a criminal? Oh, hell yeah. If I'm a criminal with a criminal mentality, I ain't worried about nothing. Gun possession? No. Mm -mm. Why so lenient? Why? Nobody wants to be called an ist. Hey, look, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Beretta. Simple. But I'm, I'm peeing into the wind right here. I am. You know, we, we accommodate the lowest common denominator now, the criminal. The criminal is someone that wants to take what isn't theirs from you and make it theirs. But we accommodate this person. We're the idiots. It ain't them. We're the idiots. Too many people in jail don't commit a crime. I mean, there's laws, aren't there? Now, I know there's extenuating circumstance, and somebody can say, well, that's your white privilege. Hey, man, if I got white privilege, God bless you. I took a little slab of a basketball court in Gary, Indiana, and turned it into a career because I decided not to do drugs when I had the opportunity at 10 years old because I decided not to rob something when a friend of mine who went to jail with a sawed-off shotgun robbed an Arby's. Just telling you. We're not instructed prosecutors to avoid seeking jail time for certain robberies and assaults. The goal is to reduce the harm the criminal justice system does to defendants. What about the harm that defendants do to their victims? It stays with you. I had a friend of mine locked in a, in a uh, freezer, liquor store in Bloomington, Indiana. He still hasn't gotten over him. We don't care about that guy. We care about the jackass that decided to do the robbing. 
The world is freaking nuts. No, not the world. The United States is nuts. We've got the best country in the world. And I swear to God, because we're so scared to stand up, we're so scared to stand up to the lowest common denominator among us. This country's going to hell and I hate it because I got kids and hopefully grandkids at some point. This sucks. New York City, you suck. <laughs> <laughs>